Prepare to win with PFF Fantasy. Use PFF's exclusive rankings, projections, advanced statistics, and more to win your draft in August and set the best lineups through the end of the regular season. Made special for the podcast listeners, use PFF promo code 49ERSPOD to save 20% on PFF's Edge or Elite subscription anytime between now and the end of the season. Go to PFF.com to sign up today. You've tuned in to the 49ers Rush podcast, and here is your host, John Chapman. Welcome to another episode of the 49ers Rush Podcast. I'm your host, John Chapman, and today is going to be a good episode because we have our final open practice camp report, but probably much more important than that, we are now on the eve of the 49ers' first preseason game. So we are going to recap the last open practice during training camp, the 11th day of practice, uh, preview kind of what's going on Friday, and then... Go all the way through the Saturday game. It's going to be on NFL Network versus the Cowboys. 6 p.m. kickoff at Levi Stadium. So uh, lots of fun stuff to look forward to. And I'm going to try to help give you a little bit of a precursor as to what positions to play uh, to pay attention to and what it is I'm going to be watching. So uh, before we get into that, there's lots of major news as far as injuries. You know, if you've been following us here with the 49ers Rush podcast, we've got something coming out uh, about every two days, sometimes back to back days. So hit subscribe if you haven't already. But you know, we got to start off talking about Nick Bosa. And the, the the last thing that I left you with was before the MRI was done, I said, here's what we need to be paying attention to. Uh, the worst case scenario is a high ankle sprain, which when the MRI came, ba- MRI came back, they said uh, it's not as severe it, as a high ankle sprain, but it's closer to a high ankle sprain than it is a regular. And what that means is it's not necessarily – the high ankle sprain doesn't necessarily mean that it is located higher on the ankle. A lot of times that is the case. It has to do with the ligament damage and what was overstretched or any issues that took place. So at the most severe end of the spectrum is like the A.J. Green injury that he had right at the start of training camp. I think it was the first day actually where he actually had to go in and have surgery to repair the tendons and ligaments in his ankle. So that's the most extreme. Bosa doesn't have that. And John Lynch came out and basically said, yeah, it's closer to a high ankle sprain, but we still think he can play. You know, he's going to miss the entire preseason. That's just what it is. So let's play through with all the information we have. Best case, probable case, worst case. Best case scenario is he's out for the preseason. They've already said that's just the way it is. And Kyle Shanahan came out and said, you know, I would prefer to have zero preseason games than four. He really believes that practice and training camp and all of those things are much more important. And Bosa, it's very easy to argue he was the defensive MVP through, you know, the first 10 practices. He missed the last one, but... He was unbelievable. He had a sack in every single training camp that he was a part of, except for the second training camp practice where he was held out of all team activities for a precautionary whatever. So best case scenario is he sits out, and he comes back week one, and he just has that pass rusher only kind of specification. He's not listed as a quote unquote starter, but he would come in just in pass rushing roles. Think Alden Smith, his rookie year, right? Um, he would first and second down if they're coming out in certain personnel groups with you know two tight ends or two running backs he would be on the sideline but if they come out and it's third and long whatever Bosa would come in and just go after the quarterback so that's best case scenario and I'm going to be honest with you I think that's kind of what is going to happen I think that he will dress and they'll get him to go through that warm-up on week one versus Tampa Bay now more probable is a week two to three full go you know maybe he sits out week one But he will be back week two. Uh, You'll see him in practice and all those different things. He'll be out there. And the worst case scenario, which, again, I don't think will happen, but this is the absolute worst case, is he is not ready to go until after the week five bye. Um, He has some kind of training hiccup. Something's just not right. And there's no need to rush him back if we're going to have D. Ford, Eric Armstead, Solomon Thomas, you know, Contavious Street, and all those things. And if you want to know... Who has the most to gain on this team it, because of the Bosa injury? It's Contavious Street. Next to that's probably Ronald Blair, but we know who Ronald Blair is. 
Street is still a very big unknown. Now, the next injury, which is very similar to Nick Bosa, is Jason Verrett. He's done for the preseason as well, and it's an absolute bummer. He got rolled up on. Kyle Shanahan said he will be good to go week one. But again, if you, this is what every front office in the National Football League does when an injury happens. If it happens you know, at the offseason, like an ACL surgery, they say, oh, he's going to be ready to go at camp. And then camp comes, and they're like, oh, we just want to take it slow. And then they'll say, oh, well, he's going to be ready week one. And then they're going to be like, oh, well, let's just take it slow. Like, look at Jarek McKinnon, who we're going to talk about next. Uh, oh, he should be ready for training camp. Yeah, he's already out there working out, all those things. Uh, not ready for training camp. They finally ease him in, and he gets knee soreness. So he is out for at least the next two weeks. This is a position, and again, the, the Jarek McKinnon signing, it seems like, gets a lot of attention. Because he plays a skill position, running back, whatever, he's kind of a big name in the fantasy world or whatever. And so there's a lot of attention there. This is not a major concern. That's not a – how do I say that? I'm not trying to downplay Jarek McKinnon's role in this team. However, if we did have you know an injury, the running back position we can overcome. We have more depth there than probably any NFL team. I truly believe that. Now, next up is the Kwan Williams one. He had his knee scoped, uh, which is – not necessarily a big deal. He will miss the rest of the preseason. He is a vet. We He knows the system as well, if not better than anybody. He is ready to go. But he's going to miss the preseason. And again, you're paying attention to the guys that have the most to gain. DJ Reed versus Emmanuel Mosley. Those are the two guys that can step up. If you remember, DJ Reed just made the transition from safety back to corner. And I, I've been saying all along, his most natural position is going to be that nickel corner. Um, Kwan Williams was probably our best secondary player last year. But DJ Reed has so much talent. His ceiling surpasses that of Kwan Williams. So uh, that's going to be a fun one to watch. And Western Richburg, he is still going to miss the rest of the preseason as well with his knee issue. Ben Garland is going to be starting with the other four starting um, linemen. Ben Garland will play a lot more than the other four, though, and I expect to see him get snaps at guard and at center. Now, we did have some transactions. We went ahead and waived wide receiver Chris Thompson. He was very short stint with us, and we brought on a guy that Chris Kasarik has been with with his last two teams. That is Jeremiah Vologa, defensive lineman, six foot six, two seventy five. He was an undrafted free agent in Detroit in two thousand seventeen. Then Miami picked him up on their practice squad last year, and again Kasarik was the guy that coached him both times, and he wanted he wanted him to stay with him. So this is interesting. I. I not saying he's just a camp body, but I'm saying if Kusarek went out and vouched for this guy and has brought him to two different locations already, that's interesting. Now, he can still make the practice squad with us, which is probably best case scenario for him, but uh, just something to look out for. I, I could see him getting a lot of snaps and just seeing what happens there. Now, let's go over the camp report. The quarterbacks had a pretty good day all in all. Jimmy Garoppolo goes 13 for 22 in team drills, and he threw four touchdown passes. Listen to who the touchdown passes were to. Tevin Coleman on a swing pass. Trent Taylor. Trent Taylor. Trent Taylor. Three touchdown passes in one day during team just with Jimmy Garoppolo. So a couple things that we want to pay attention to. One, you love to hear the conversion rates that are taking place during red zone and two-minute drills. That is music to my ears for the quarterback. And I don't even care which quarterback. Um, we just need this system and this offense to start having confidence when they get into the red zone. And again, one of those things you're going to watch for in the preseason game week one is can they convert when they get inside. If they're kicking field goals, every time you see a field goal, that is a major loss now if it's like a 50 yarder or 40 yarder then that's that's wonderful that's a win for the offense for sure but if we're settling for short field goals that is going to piss me off every single time nick mullins amazing practice nine for 13 he goes two touchdowns one to matt Breida on a swing pass get used to hearing that and one to caden smith now shout out to caden smith he's had a pretty quiet training camp I, I think that he has missed out on the early dibs to that number two tight end spot that's going to be roswelly we'll talk a little bit more about him soon but caden smith had a hell of a practice 
his blocking has it was pretty rough at the start but it's continuing to get better and his touchdown pass was a 12 yard just kind of stop and turn around in traffic uh took a couple hits had some guys hanging all over him and still made the catch if he is going to find his way into that number three tight end spot over levine tololo these are the type of things he's going to have to do Caden Smith is never really the guy that's going to, you know, be running down the field. You look at his yards per catch at Stanford, they were great, but that was a major play action heavy offense and they would literally max protect and send out one wide receiver. Sometimes it would be Caden Smith um on like third and one. They love throwing the ball on, on third and short. But anyway, I digress. Uh, here's the deal. The big difference between him and uh, last year is just that he's getting so much more reps. Nick Mullins is what I'm talking about. Sorry about that. This is what Kyle Shanahan said. Um, I got to find a different way to do my notes. I have KS for Kyle Shanahan, but I'm talking about Caden Smith. (laughs) Sorry about that. Um, Anyway, a little peek behind the curtain. But Kyle Shanahan came out and he was asked in his press conference, man, what's the big difference between Nick Mullins now and Nick Mullins last year? And Kyle Shanahan said the big difference is he's getting so many more reps. You know, he was on our practice squad last year, Nick Mullins, and once we got into tra- out of training camp and the regular season started, he was our scout team free safety. So this is a guy, our backup quarterback we're talking about, which was played backup free safety to give our number one offense looks. So the fact that he is now getting all these meaningful reps, because if you go back to last year, you know, CJ was getting predominantly all the number two reps so Mullins has come along very very nicely absolutely love that guy um I I just big dick dick man I I love this kid he he's an absolute beast and I can't wait to see what he's gonna do don't pay attention to which quarterback goes in first Uh, Kyle Shanahan has continued to maintain that this is going to be a competition even if Nick Mullins throws five touchdowns and zero interceptions and CJ goes zero touchdowns for five interceptions Kyle Shanahan's still going to say this is an open competition he cannot pronounce it early he just can't um so keep that in mind um CJ went six for 15 he had two touchdown passes point Dexter and James were the two guys he hit as he was working with the threes now Jalen Hurd, um, you know, he was brought up a lot and probably the most talked about player in Kyle Shanahan's last press conference of training camp. And Kyle Shanahan just said, you know, he's so aggressive and we really like these bigger guys with strong hands. And somebody asked, okay, who has the strongest hands on the team? And without even like thinking about it or whatever, he just rattled off born Debo Jalen Hurd, those three guys. And... I, I could really see, like, once we get down to the goal line, those being the three wide receivers that are out there. Have Debo and Board on the outside and Jalen Hurd in the slot. That would be ideal. Uh, what a just impressive <laughs> wide receiving physical sp- just beast bullies down there. Uh, whether you're running the ball or whether you're throwing the ball, those guys can go get it. Now, it was asked again, I think, by Matt Bur- Burrows, who came out and said, you know, Uh, Two rookies on that list is interesting. And Kyle Shanahan said, yep, uh, that's why we drafted him. But Devontae Pettis, you know, Dante Pettis, sorry, um, he was left off this list. He did not have a good practice. The last two practices may be his worst of all training camp. He's having some issues. Now, his separation and his routes are the best on the team, and it's not even close. But he is struggling with drops, and we saw this last year early on, which is crazy because if we go back to his college film at Washington, he never dropped a ball. (laughs) In four years of game film, you can't find one dropped pass from Dante Pettis. So it's – it's got to be a little bit of a psychological issue. They're still going to – lean on him as the wide receiver one there's nobody else that can create the separation not Debo not Goodwin not anybody but Devontae Pettis is going to be the number one wide receiver for this team there's no doubt about that he just has to take that next step so very curious to see how that's going to go but uh, it's something to look for and the last thing I want to talk about at practice is Tarvarius Moore holy cow the two best defensive plays throughout the whole practice 
he is he's making a move i ain't gonna lie uh he is he's shooting up that depth chart the fact that he continues to line up with the number one defense is impressive you know he had the very first true interception of jimmy garoppolo during team Uh, it took 11 training camp practices before jimmy garoppolo threw a true interception what i mean by that is he threw two interceptions before one was a tipped pass that was picked off and one was a dropped pass by kendrick Bourne that was picked off but this was just man tarvarius Moore just beat him and again he was guarding pettis in the red zone and he just jumped the route and got the interception and then after that whenever they were in the middle of the field George Kittle goes for a deep ball, and Tarvarius Moore covers a bunch of ground, which is exactly what you want to see with a free safety. Again, you go back to what this kid did at his pro day, back-to-back 4-3-2s. He has the range. He has the speed. He has the length. He has all those things. He just doesn't have the experience. But he he covers a lot of ground, and he breaks up the ball, which would have been probably a 30-yard gain or more um, against George Kittle. So you love that he's making these plays versus the ones he, he's not doing it against you know the third team and practice squad players he's intercepting jimmy garoppolo he's breaking in front of routes of dante pettis he's knocking balls away from george kittle these are what we want to look for so jumping into the next part of our show today here are the things in that i am looking for in the first preseason game again keep in mind our head coach doesn't care about preseason games that much but he does want to see how players go out there and compete and perform. Uh, back to the quote Kyle Shanahan, I'd rather have zero than four preseason games. Uh, I hold much more value in practice and in joint practices than I do in preseason games. So just keep that in mind. We're going to be out, with, we're going to be out there with a lot of starters gone. So right off the bat, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is not playing. So it's going to be Mullins and CJ. Uh, Western Richburg, our starting center, is not playing, so it's going to be Ben Garland. See how he does out there. Uh, let's see, D. Ford and Bosa are out, so it's going to be a lot of Solomon Thomas, Eric Armstead, Blair, Contavious Street. Um, those are the guys we're going to watch. Now, it sucks because we're missing those defensive ends. I, I hate. I, I want to see Solomon Thomas basically play the entire game. If you want to continue playing them outside, which is a major mistake, uh, but if you're going to do that, I want to see him outside with the ones, inside with the twos. I want to see Solomon Thomas play inside. Uh, that's what I want. The main guys that I'm looking for there, we know Ronald Blair is. He can do everything very, very well. He is uh, The saying goes like jack of all trades, ace of none. I think Ronald Blair is like a queen of all trades. Like He's better than just average. He can do it all. But Contavious Street... That's going to be the guy when he is out there. That's going to be the one I'm going to be watching. And then our slot corner, nickel corner, Kwan Williams is out with his knee scope. DJ Reed, Emmanuel Mosley. I think that it is DJ Reed's backup sole spot, but Mosley has made some plays in camp. Uh, He is fighting. Uh, Practice squad candidate. We'll see what happens, but I really think DJ Reed is going to be that guy. He is so physical in the run game. His film at K-State was just so much fun. Anyway, um, and then Jimmy Ward's going to be out. I know whenever I say the name Jimmy Ward, Mr. Glass, people get pissed off. Most of my mentions are, why are we not dropping Jimmy Ward? Why are we not dropping Jimmy Ward? I am with you. Um, I am not a Jimmy Ward fan. I love his attitude. Um, I love what he brings to the table and versatility, but I don't think that he is a starting player and should not be seen as such. But our coaching staff does. Jimmy Ward is the starting free safety. I don't care how good Tarvarius Moore is. I really do think week one will be Jimmy Ward. Um, for better or worse. Again, I don't agree with that. That just seems to be what is in the cards. So with Ward being out of the preseason, um, he should be coming back for Denver week is what they said. Look for Adrian Colbert and Tarvarius Moore to duke that out to see who is going to be the backup free safety. Now, this is a very important battle. One, that person's going to be a starter within the first three weeks of the season. Um, Jimmy Ward, whether he gets hurt again or not, we know what he is. He's an okay average player with a very low ceiling. So um, just understand that Colbert – And more battle I'm super excited about because I'm pretty sure AC is going to get the the starting job on Saturday night. But when Moore comes in, let's see if he brings any energy 
And if he brings any type of excitement or anything to that defense, then I think he's going to be bumped up on the depth chart. So something to watch next week. Now, here's what the preseason is really about. So Kyle Shanahan can say he doesn't like it. But the best thing about the preseason is from a player's perspective, it's the non-starters. These guys get to go out there and put together film and show what they can do. We have 90 players on our roster. We have to cut down to 53. 47 guys, if my math is correct. I think my math is wrong. Yeah, it is. 37 guys. I'm smart, guys. Don't worry. So we're coming, We're going from 90 <laughs> to 53. I'm not cutting that, by the way. Usually I cut that, but I think that's funny. So we're losing a lot of dudes. These guys get to go out and put film together as a tryout audition for not only the 49ers practice squad, if somebody gets hurt, but another team. You know, if if you look at last year, you know, my favorite camp uh, battle was the backup safety role again. And there was a guy by Terrell Williams who I absolutely loved. The very first preseason game, he goes out there, lights it up, and was absolutely incredible. Then blew out his knee in training camp by hitting the concrete in that joint practice for the Texans. We do an injury settlement. We eventually waive him, whatever else. He's with the Saints now, and he is battling for the backup safety spot. Like, he's going to make their roster. And so if from a player's perspective and like an NFLPA perspective, these guys are fighting for their futures. And I absolutely love that, especially the guys that you follow all the way through high school and college and all this stuff. So this is a big deal. Now we will get to keep 10 guys that we cut for a practice squad, but not everybody's available for that. The rules for the practice squad are this. You have to have less than two accrued seasons. That's the NFL's stupid word i hate it so much which means you had six games active or less so if you were active six games in a season that counts as one accrued season six games or less for uh, more for another season that's two accrued seasons you cannot be on the practice squad so these are the guys that are going to be undrafted free agents uh, late round rookies or guys with injury designation things like that so like somebody like contavia street he would qualify for the practice squad but the problem is this Practice squad players aren't safe. So let's say, for example, I don't think that Kentavious Street's going to make our practice squad. I'm just using his as an example. I think he's going to make our roster. Let's say we want to say, man, we have so much depth at D-line. We're just going to put Street on our practice squad. Well, all 31 other teams can claim him as long as they guarantee him a roster spot that week on their 53 active. Um, well, 47 active, but their 53-man roster. So practice squad guys are not safe. But um, it's a week-to-week job to where they just give us a look. Nick Mullins was on that for a while. Uh, Roz Dwelly was on that for a while. Najee Torin was on that for a while. And so it's a way to kind of farm system develop this, these guys in. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, a couple just generic position battles that I'm pretty pumped about. Because, again, this is their first time to hit somebody else. They've been beating up on each other through OTAs through mini camp, through training camp. Now they get to go against somebody else. Our defensive line has dominated our offensive line. I want to see what they could do against the Cowboys because even though the Cowboys starters might not play, Cowboys have one of the deepest offensive lines in the NFL. So really excited to see if we can still maintain that pressure and screw up the offense like we did against our offense for the first two and a half weeks of training camp. So that's going to be pretty fun to watch. Both groups are deep. Our defensive line is probably the strength of our team. Their offensive line is strength of their team. Uh, Julian Taylor. Can he continue to put up that consistent pressure uh, against the interior of the offensive line? I'm looking for him to have a monster game. and I want to see how early he gets in. I want to see him get in with some of the ones. I want to see him go against a starter just because I think he's one of those interior guys, which we're super deep at, that might have the highest ceiling outside of somebody like DeForest Buckner, obviously, who's one of the best, but whatever. Now, our offensive line? All three teams are important. We have a lot of position battles in that offensive line. What's going to happen with Sean Coleman versus Justin School? They're going to be out there together. Uh, Sean Coleman at left tackle, Justin School at right tackle. They might even switch them. I doubt it. But uh, who's going to perform better there? We've got to figure out what's going on there. And this is going to let us know as well. Is our offensive line just trash 
Or is our offense, the depth of our offensive line, the starters won't be out there for a long time, but is our offensive line just getting schooled through training camp because they're going against one of the best defensive lines in the NFL? Also, that third tight end position, I really do believe Roz Dwelly has locked up the number two role, at least for early on in the season. But again, Caden Smith and Toy Lolo, I think both those guys will get a lot of snaps, but Caden Smith should lead the team in snaps at the tight end position because he's really the only guy this coaching staff is not familiar with. Uh, Kyle Shedhan was with Toy Lolo back in Atlanta. Roz Dwelly was with us last year in the practice squad. So I really want to see Caden Smith get a lot of snaps. And then the wide receiver position. Man, the snap counts and target share for those two rookie, rookie wide receivers. Very excited. Hurd and Debo. Um, Jalen Hurd's number 17. Debo's number 19. I want to see them out there on every play, even if it's not a pass play. Are they going to bring their physicality to the blocking game against somebody else? Do they get separation on routes, whether they get thrown to or not? Will Jalen Hurd keep his poise, or is he going to be out there as a hothead that we saw early on? I I want a mixture. (laughs) I want poise, but I also want anger. I want to see everything that they do. Don't expect a lot of snaps from Pettis, Goodwin, or Trent. We know who they are. Um, We want to see what's behind them. And then probably the last thing that I'm pretty excited about, and this is kind of should tell you a little bit about how I feel. I want to watch the punting game. Mitch Wisnowski, um, he is going to be out there. Really excited to see his hang time and also his steps as a punter. You know, one of my critiques of that pick, which I'm on board. I'm on board. I'm glad we got him. So hear me say that. My biggest, like, asterisk as I was breaking down punter film, which, gosh, that makes me feel sad about my life, but that's okay. Um, He led the NCAA in block punts. He seems to sometimes take an extra step. Now, I don't expect to see all-out punt block formation in preseason one, but um, I will be timing. (laughs) This is what I do. I will be timing his catch to punt get off every single time because i want to see what that's going to do and if he has worked to improve that a lot of time the punters just work off by themselves with the kicking group and all that stuff i want to see what that looks like um plus you know you got that crazy wind and candlestick with the way it goes um i'm just excited to see it now after the game is over Saturday night, I will be doing an offensive breakdown series, much like I do throughout the entire year. The day of the game, I'm going to try to get it out. Now, I do have to confess, it is my son's birthday. And so once the birthday festivities are over and everything is cleaned up, then I will start recording. So it might come out before midnight. It might not. But I do promise you that there will be, when you wake up Sunday morning, there will be an episode waiting for you wherever you subscribe. So uh, it's going to be a late night, but I'm really, really excited. Birthday plus start of preseason. It's going to be a good time. So appreciate the listen. Subscribe, rate, and review if you have it. And stay strong, faithful. The next time we talk, we got a football game to break down. Oh, I'm excited.